They may be small insects, but they're causing big problems. They don't discriminate between rich and poor, and they're happy in your home or even traveling in your luggage. Decades after almost being exterminated, bed bugs are back. Turning now to a disturbing story involving bugs on a SEPTA bus. A woman on that bus took a video of the unwanted passengers, and that video has since gone viral. Action News reporter John Rollins explains SEPTA is now addressing the problem. Bed bugs scampering along the top of an upholstered seat back, not in someone's home, but on a SEPTA bus. So sometimes you get stories, you know what I mean, because you see something on Twitter, you know, you search around for a story to do because you need to do a video. And sometimes you do a story because somebody the fuck around you tells you about a goddamn story. You know what I'm saying? Apparently, you know what I'm saying, our fucking newspaper around here decided to let us know that my city made the list of top 50 cities in America for percentage of households with motherfucking bed bugs in it. So here's a list of the top 50 cities. Philadelphia, PA, New York, uh, New York, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, Indianapolis, Indiana, Cincinnati, Ohio, Los Angeles, California, Cleveland, Ohio, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Illinois, Boston, Massachusetts, Columbus, Ohio, Houston, Texas, Baltimore, Maryland, Atlanta, Georgia, Detroit, Michigan, Pittsburgh, PA, Memphis, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, Orlando, Florida, Tampa, Florida, Louisville, Kentucky, St. Louis, Missouri, Little Rock, Arkansas, Dayton, Ohio, Charleston, Huntington, West Virginia, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Toledo, Ohio, Paducah, Kentucky, Fort Smith, Arkansas, Lexington, Kentucky, Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, Kansas City, Missouri, San Francisco, California, Shreveport, Louisiana, Miami, Florida, Hartford, Connecticut, South Bend, Indiana, Springfield, Missouri, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Jacksonville, Florida, West Palm Beach, Florida, Davenport, uh, Iowa, Honolulu, uh, Hawaii, Evansville, Indiana, Jackson, Mississippi, Youngstown, Ohio, Montgomery, Alabama, and Denver, Colorado. Whew. Man, listen, all right, this shit is getting fucking serious, all right? The research recently has said that 22% of Americans have had a bed bug encounter and the odds are much higher with those with children. We need to have a conversation about what we're doing at the moment. Real shit. I found an article. I'm going to read it to you. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the motherfucking comments. Well, you know, I found this article here. It's from 2018 uh, by the Philadelphia Inquirer. It says, why Philly is a particularly bad place to get bed bugs. Carolyn Allen, Allen had just moved into a studio apartment in West Philadelphia when she noticed a bug bite in her foot. She assumed the mosquito got her, but by the end of the week, she had bites up and down her legs. When she found a crawling little brown bug about the size of an apple seed, she called her landlord to confirm her fear. Mm. The landlord sent an exterminator, but the treatment didn't take and the infestation got worse. She reached out to the health department and asked for an inspector to come out. They said, we don't deal with bed bugs because they don't carry diseases. Allen said, yeah. I said, this is a horrible infestation. The landlord isn't doing anything, and they didn't care. <laughs> Alan moved. Oh, come on. What are you doing, man? Alan moved out a month later after having to pay a fee for ending her lease early. She had a partner moved into her parents' house briefly and inadvertently transferred her problem to them. Treating the family home, she said, cost $4,000. All cities have bed bugs, but Philadelphia is one of the only one is the only one of the 10 most populated municipalities without clear roles for who is responsible for how to report complaints. Attempts to create a policy have gone nowhere because the city has balked at adding bed bug inspections to an already hefty caseload of complaints and advocates for property owners made it clear they don't want to be on the hook for expensive exterminations. Well, you know, they're right. You know, I mean, when it really comes down to it, like, yo, as a landlord, you're already not making that much money and you're taking all the risk and you're responsible for like the property taxes and all the bullshit that goes into it. So like a lot of the times being a being a landlord, it really isn't what it's cracked up to be. It's legit more like you're having somebody help you out pay for a place where you live a lot of times. And even with the bigger places, it's still like, you know, yeah, there's corporate money in there, but the reality is it's... Man, it, it's highly expensive. You're talking, like, say you have, I don't know, 
say you have 20 places, right? And it costs you $2,000 a pop. You know, I mean, that's 40 grand right there, just off the top. You know, and that's ridiculous. And that's, you know, just for, you know what I mean, like to start off. Like, you know what I mean? And you have to keep doing it. And then you have people, you know, like they all have to wash all their stuff. So that means, you know what, man, they ain't going to be paying their fucking rent. Because, you know what, a lot of them, you know, I'm mean, living paycheck to paycheck. You expect them to stand here and wash all of their clothing. And then you got to shampoo all the rugs, replace the carpets, do all these things. You know what I mean? Like, yo, break out all the outlets and all this shit. Like, yo, we're talking about a massive undertaking at one point. And I mean, you're going to keep having recurrences going on and on and on and on and on forever. Like, you know, this is something that at some point somebody has to be responsible for. Personally, and I mean, I think that we should, you know, I mean, have a conversation with the individuals in government who were okay with letting all these fucking immigrants into the country the past 30 goddamn years. Maybe we can have this conversation. Maybe we need to tighten down the rules on how the fuck it is you get out of the in and, uh, in and out of this fucking country. Like, real shit, like, you know, I know we really don't like invasive stuff. Like, and I I completely understand that. Legit. Like, I I fully, I am fully supportive. I'm a libertarian. I get that ideology. But the reality is, is that you can't have people coming into this country and bringing pests and petulance upon the people. You know what I mean? Because, like, it's now on a level where, you know, things are getting really fucking bad and we're having to deal with it and you go... it's the poor people who are having to pay the fucking price. Right? Anyway, right? So let's let's keep going down. To this day, I, I don't want to downplay PTSD, but it has messed with me for a very long time, Alan said. Yo, I feel you. And I mean, I've had bed bugs before. Yo, it's fucking awful. Legit, man. Yo, you just basically just walk away from everything you fucking own. You know what I mean? Change your goddamn clothes somewhere. You know what I mean? Throw all your old shit the fuck away. Get a goddamn shower at a truck stop or something. And move on about your fucking business. Because, like, yo, you... It's fucking terrible because you basically you're never going to get rid of it. Five years ago, city council created a task force to study Philadelphia's bed bug issue. After Councilman Mark Squilla confessed to colleagues and reporters in his South Philadelphia home was full of the blood suckers. Yeah, and like it's one of those things where like you don't want to talk about it either. That that's another part of this, right? None of the tax force recommendations has been adopted in the legislation. There are obviously bed bugs in the city, but no one wants to be in charge of bed bugs," said Michelle Niedermeyer, who chaired the task force. Is now an administration from Philadelphia against bed bugs. Buildings fall down. And labor and industry has to deal with it, but the health department is wrapped up in the opioid crisis and funds get shifted. Meanwhile, no one is taken seriously the impact it has on humans. Like, yo, that's, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yo, on top of that, we're dealing with the fucking opioid crisis. Again, another immigration-related problem. Like, yo, man, look, these are, this is the issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what the rest of this fucking, like, these Democrats and shit and these shitheads don't fucking see, is that... Yeah, they might be people down there, the, and you're not suffering the consequences right this moment, but a lot of us are, and I mean legit, like a lot of us are suffering those fucking consequences. Squeal said by email last week would a, that a policy, policy never materialized because the health commissioner said bed bugs weren't a health issue and didn't want to be bothered. <laughs> City spokeswoman Deanna Gamble said bed bug policy is in his work but will not provide details. Bed bugs are small, wingless, brownless, red parasites. Female bugs live up to five eggs a day and survive for several months to a year without a meal. They tend to bite hands and feet. They don't, in fact, transmit diseases. They burrow in mattresses, furniture, outlet walls, and windowsills and can travel through cracks in the wall. An advantage Philadelphia, an advantage in Philadelphia where 90% to 2% of housing is connected, said Niedermeyer. This is why, like, it's not as bad out west as it is in the northeast. Legit. You know what I mean? When it really comes down to it. Programming coordinator for Pennsylvania's Integrated Pest Management Program. The word of the pest hangs? Oh, come on. Because there's no formal way to report a bed bug incident in Philadelphia, there's no official count of confirmed cases. A 2014 study by the University of Philadelphia entomologist found that one in Philadelphia, one South Philadelphia zip code had 11% of homes that had been affected. Yo, that's a lot. Six Philadelphia, come on, man. Six Philadelphia pest communities contacted said their cases have grown every year for at least the last decade. The bed, the bugs have been largely eradicated by 1972 when chemical DDT was banned. 
They're everywhere, said Rhonda Griffin, owner of Pest Free Maintenance Incorporated. People are at the wit's end. They're doing things that are really crazy. Griffin said she's walked into homes where people have set off bed bug, they set off bug bombs meant for roaches, useless on bed bugs, or thrown out mattresses in the panic and slept on the floor, which makes it easier for the bugs to bite. She heard of people trying to heat their homes to kill bed, kill the bugs, and then accidentally setting the place on fire. Bed bugs can hitch a ride on any person or suitcase and set up shop in any home regardless of how tidy or expensive it is. But people already dealing with poverty or health issues struggle more than those who can afford the costly treatments. Depending on square footage, a bed bug treatment can run between 500 and two grand. Dylan DeWitt of Liberty Community Connections Incorporated coordinates home health care services for people with disabilities. He receives calls daily from clients who say their aides won't come inside because of an infestation. They want to keep con- they want to continue living independently, he said, but we but can't afford the pest treatments. It's heartbreaking, DeWitt said. These people really need help, but their but their aides won't come inside because of the bed bugs. Yo, like yo, you're at the point where like nurses aren't going in and helping people. Who was responsible? Philadelphia's property maintenance code requires landlords to provide a safe and inhabitable home of free of pests and insects. But the Department of Licenses and Inspections does not consider bed bugs to be its responsibility. Rather, it concerns itself with pets such as termites, carpenter ants, and uh, damage the buildings. Yeah, like, yo, I mean, and it makes sense. But, like, on the same point, like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, these are people who are getting eaten by insects in their own home. In most big cities, property owners are explicitly responsible for keeping homes and apartments bed bug free. In New York City's inspectors and two bed bug sniffing beagles respond to complaints and issue violations to landlords. Complaints in New York decreased from 9,618 to 8,113 last year. Let me let me put it like this, right? You know what I'm saying? When it really comes down to it, It's it's on that level where, you know, like, I, I legit am standing here going like, man, you know, like, yeah, somebody has to be responsible, but there, there has to be some type of fucking help or something, you know what I mean, legit, like, yo, because it's, it is a public self, it is a public health risk, like, it's, it, it's, a, like, yo, it wouldn't take shit for this to turn into something very, very bad, really fucking quickly. Victor Pinkey, a landlord and member of Homeowners Association of Philadelphia, said he typically requires tenants to pay for the treatments. Most property owners are not putting bed bugs in tenants' property, said Pinkney, who was on the city task force. Any policy that makes property owners liable would likely mean rent hikes, he said. We explained in the task force that you're making it harder for low and moderate income people to be able to find housing. Yep, yeah, that's another problem as well. Like, you know, like your housing is going up by double. The Pennsylvania Apartment Association also fought against legal um, legislation while on the task force and boasts about its success on the website. The insects are not only things that can hitchhike to other communities. Proposals for legislation have a way of catching on in other com- other locales. We'll continue our vigilance. Yo, I I don't have a problem with legislation. Just you shouldn't like yo. It has to be a community effort. Like it can't be like always oh, going to put all the weight on the fucking landlords and shit. Like we need to have. A way that this shit gets done and you're know, like we we stand here and treat whole communities at a shot just go door to door to door to door to door and just treat everybody even if you don't fucking have it and I understand that that's how we end up building up resistances and shit but fuck the garbage it needs to be dealt with Jeremy Evan the company service manager started this Wednesday morning in a northeast Philadelphia row house where an elderly woman who did not want to be identified discovered the infestation when her granddaughter slept over and as in God as Evans put it eaten alive only about 60% of people react to bites Evan said I've seen some bad arguments where between couples where she's getting bitten and he isn't and that usually ends up when I flip over when I flip the mattress over Evans used a series of heaters to warm the house to 135 degrees and roast the bugs. The curb outside was filled with more than a dozen bag, trash bags of clothing. Evans suspects the house next door was the source of the bugs. People with connected properties are sometimes at the mercy of the neighbors, sometimes because of the embarrassment or fear neighbors won't communicate at all or until the bed bugs get out of hand. A business traveler's nightmare. Shannon Sturton flew to Philadelphia from Arizona for a medical conference last year and says she got bed bugs at the Philadelphia downtown Marriott. She has pictures of her legs covered in more than 100 bites. Like, ah, yeah, that's so fucking disgusting. Sturt event was also alarmed as she called the Philadelphia, was so alarmed the Philadelphia Department of Health, but we learned the department does not respond to bed bug complaints. 
course, nobody even to call. Like, yo, she wrote to the Marriott's corporate office, was sent an email, shared with the inquiry, and the exterminator determined the room didn't have bugs. Sturman, who said they spent the entire stay at the hotel, which also hosted the convention, asked to see the extermination report, but never heard back. The city's health department said at Sturm, uh, at Sturman's prompt, and eventually sent a letter to Marriott corporate office, but never got a response, according to email. Marriott spokeswoman Lucy Slosser said she had no direct knowledge of the incident, but stressed the hotel takes hygiene and sanitation very seriously. Yeah, you're still a hotel. And like, yo, it's, it's not like I'm looking at you like you're a fucking, you're a dirtbag hotel. Nah, like, yo, I get it. Like, man, look, yo, when you have people traveling in and out on fucking international flights all the time and shit, you have people coming up from fucking Central America and, you know, fucking Eastern Europe where these are major problems. Like, it's not something that I'm going to stand here and blame you for. This shit happens. You know what I mean? And there's... Yo, there's just not a lot we can do. Again, like, yo, we have to control people either at the fucking ports, at the fucking airports, at the fucking, at, on boat crossings. Stop letting people coming over the border without getting fucking checked. This is the shit that, like, like, oh, man, they're fucking building these detention camps or concentration camps. No. No. For fuck, no. God, no, that's not the situation at all, man. Like, yo, you have to check people before they come in, or this is what happens. <sighs> For fuck's sake. You know, I'm not a, usually a big fan of government intervention, but, man, sometimes, like, yo, we're going to have to band together as communities to get this shit the fuck done. Like, it is what it is. Anyway, man, this is Tom Pease with P No News. Y'all know the deal. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace.